So here we're going to look at Rowland's really quick changes in gradient. So on any steep section of trail, whether it's wood, rocks or dirt, body position and weight shift are really, really important. So with this, you want to make sure that you're moving from the hips and that all your balance is very low and that you use as much space behind the saddle as possible. It's very common for people to think that the saddle has to remain between their legs and they move their shoulders. Whereas in a section like this, all the movement comes from the hips and push the weight as far back as possible and extend the arms. A balanced entry, very controlled entrance speed and then letting off the brakes and allowing the bike to roll down while your weight gradually moves forwards again is absolutely crucial and you'll stay completely in balance and enjoy yourself. You know, the best thing to do is kill your speed on the way in. Yeah. Approach it very, very slow. You can you can almost roll to a stop at the top, and then just that little bit of acceleration will just keep your balance on the way down. Okay. You caught air. Did you did you notice that? Yeah. Uh, was that the kind of the bit where I sort of there was a sharp intake of breath before I caught air before? Yeah. No, I did both. Didn't roll it. So I guess too fast into it, I suppose. No. You actually pull the bike up there, it's almost like a kind of a panic reaction. Well, yeah, I know, I got, off it. I got the fear, I got the fear there, definitely. Why, why did you get the fear? Well, so you're staring at a certain death or, you know, staring into the abyss or whatever else, you kind of go, ah! right. you kind of like, <coughs> like that, and sort of draw in breath as you do. But as you lifted, did you feel out of control? So I wasn't as in control as I would have been if I'd kind of done what we talk about hips back over the saddle and arms straight and just trust that the bike's going to roll out. Did you know your hips did pretty much in line with the seat? It's, it's all higher powered wired in stuff, you know, if somebody habitually does something wrong or habitually does something poorly because they get the fear, it's quite hard getting out people out to think their way through a manoeuvre. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it's, the, the intake of breath was kind of a taking hold like of the bike. Knee -jerk reaction to yeah, knee-jerk reaction is a pretty good way of putting it. You know, wow, there's a big drop. What do I do? Mm -hmm. Pull in. Not really thinking about it, you just do it. Mm. I guess that's quite a hard thing to get over. You're kind of uh, you're reacting. You're not really thinking. If you get the fear. This diagram clearly shows, and from my shoulders back, is in the green zone that we've highlighted, whereas you can see that a lot of Rory's upper body is still over the front of his bike, meaning he's losing control and his balance is really off. If you watch this in full speed, you'll see that by Rory keeping his weight so far over the front, his back wheel almost leaves the ground and the loss of control could result in a fairly bad smash. The manual is probably one of the most used techniques. You can use it at any given point on any descent. So the trick is to find a nice mellow downhill gradient. Firstly, if you're going quite slow, a slight forwards movement can help to preload the bike, almost like coiling a spring. And from this position, you want to thrust backwards with your arms, moving your hips over the back of the bike. And the trick at this point is to not allow the front wheel to leave the ground until your arms are straight. So if you can imagine moving back like this, when you get to this point with your arms straight, if you keep moving back, the front wheel has no choice but to lift up. Now at the same time, if you can use your legs to thrust forwards, you can actually have the bottom half of your body moving this direction, which will be pushing the back wheel under the front, and your upper body and your hips moving in this direction, which is pulling the front of the bike up. So between the two, if you get your timing right, you should feel very effortless. With a slight flick and using that momentum you've built with your body weight, the front wheel should lift up no problem at all. Yeah, a really good thing to think about is just keep a couple of fingers covering the back brake. So if it does go a little bit pear shaped, the back brake is going to bring that front wheel down straight away. So once you've mastered the art of actually learning to manual on the flat, if you can start getting into the habit of dropping heels and using your legs, you can use the manual in all manner of situations out on the trail. By using your legs and extending the back wheel into compressions, you can manual through doubles, manual through whoop sections, or the most common one would be puddles and river crossings. 
What you can also do with the manual is lift the front wheel before a small sort of speed bump on the trail, meaning that you won't actually take off the back side of the drop, allowing you to push the front wheel down, keeping the bike on the ground and maintaining speed. That's not too bad. Am I supposed to be higher? Not really, no. Not really said so. Maybe we get you in a little bit more balance. Your actual movement was very good. If you've got not much speed, it's a little bit forwards, and then you go back with your hips, and you slide your hips off the back of the, off the, back of the saddle, and that way. And if you think of maintaining a square between your shoulders and the handlebars, and your arms, then that means you're completely in balance, you're completely straight. So you go forwards like that, and you go back like that. But there's no turning the bars, and there's no shoulder movement either way. And that should keep you in balance, going in a straight line. Now, the other trick, this is a bit people quite often don't pick up with the manual, is to push your heels down. So as your weight's going backwards from the upper body, as this part's going back, you think your lower body wants to move in the opposite direction. So you want to actually straighten your legs forwards and not down. And that's how you, know, you can get more lift to the front wheel, but it's also how you can adapt to changes in the trail. So if we then progress this onto manualing through a drainage ditch, or through like some, some bumps on a, a bumpy section of a black route, then you actually use your legs to move the back wheel. So, as I move back from here, I drop my heel and push that way. So I'm almost trying to push the back wheel underneath the front, so it's like that position. But if you can imagine, when your heel's up, your knee stays bent, and there's, there's not much you can do with it, and you actually push down the way through the pedal to maintain grip, especially if you're on flat pedals. The minute I drop my heel, suddenly I can straighten my leg that much because it's a very natural position and it also means that by pushing, I'm now pushing against the pedal that way, so as I move back, that should happen like that. and that helps you not only push your weight further back but it helps you lift the front wheel further oh. That's better, what you want to do is just, so just soften those hips a little bit so you, your feet are staying, your heels are staying quite high until quite late on and, you, and because of that your hips are moving up to this area. So try and just bend more from the hips and, and move your weight back so stay lower. Like, and that's, that's why when we go to drops, that's why I was saying I think we can get you more balance because you'll be lower. So set, lower centre of gravity. It's always much better with a manual, sort of slight downward gradient so that you've got a bit of speed. Because speed's your friend with the manual, just like we're only going to apply the manual to descents now when you're not pedalling and standing up. So a little bit of speed on the pedals and then standing up and stopping pedalling. So something flat with a slight downhill gradient like this is going to help a lot with the manual. Second one was really good, didn't it? Yeah, that was my that was pretty much That second one was pretty much it, man. It's not a, it's not a move that I feel very natural with. I, I can feel myself resisting like fighting the movement, if, right. do you know what I mean? Um, it should feel, when you get it right, it should feel quite effortless. Like you say, sometimes if you, you know if you drive your legs so hard, it, it can feel like you're gonna flip off the back of the bike. But that's good, because it means your weight's over the back. So just, um, just get used to it. Just remember, keeping those hips low will make you feel a lot more stable, so then you should feel a little bit more comfortable with the whole thing. Um, but just keep going with that, because that second one was perfect. I mean, we're not looking for massive big Dave Mira Manuals. We just want little, you know, little controlled, balanced movements that we can then apply to drops. Okay. Because if you're in balance here, when you start doing 30 miles an hour on a on a black route, you'll be you'll still be you know, just as imbalanced. So that's what we're kind of striving for. So here we are, we've, we've got a drop that's probably about a foot or two high. We've got a nice flat run in and a nice flat landing. And we're just going to develop a way of taking off so that the wheels land at the same time and you're very in control. The key with drop-offs is to make sure that you're always in balance. 
So coming in, you want to spot the lip of the drop. Make sure your pedals are nice and level. Your knees are nice and soft, it's slightly bent, and your elbows are slightly out and, and slightly bent as well. And this will give you a nice stable base from which to take off. And as you approach a drop at a sort of possibly a jogging pace, you want to start your manual as your front wheel hits the lip so you can get your timing right. And from there, as you approach the drop, with your front wheel reaching the edge, you want your weight to start shifting back so the front wheel takes off and stays going out until your back wheel gets there. And this position is really important because a proper drop off, you should never actually go any higher than the lip itself. You should only ever go out and then down. So here you have the bike nice and level. At this point, the weight's over the back wheel. The hips have moved and the center of gravity is very low. Your heels might be slightly dropped at this point too. And then as the back wheel reaches the lip, you then move your weight gradually forward back to the middle of the bike, which will allow the bike to land both wheels at the same time. So you give you a nice smooth landing, you nice and in balance, and it also lets you use your legs and arms for a bit of suspension as well. So you see on a drop with a steep landing that your weight has to remain slightly further back than it would do if the landing was flat. You'll notice that the takeoff and the approach remains exactly the same, but when I come into the landing, my weight, my hips are still slightly further back, which allows the front to, to drop a little bit more and match the gradient for a smooth landing. So you don't need a massive amount of speed. A movement back, like the manual, yeah. only back, not up. We'll take all the weight off the front wheel and I'll let the front wheel keep going out at that angle. And once your back wheel gets to the lip of the drop, the weight's over here. You now start transferring that weight back to the middle of the bike, back to that stance you would have on the flat bit of ground. And then once the back wheel gets to drop, it'll just drop off. You don't want to land with your weight still off the back, so remember that once you've done the manual, you're then going to bring your weight back to the middle of the bike to land it in control. Okay, so just remember that, that just doing the manual part, doesn't. that's not where the movement finishes. It finishes when your weight's back towards the middle of the bike again, and that means you'll land with your weight in the middle. And then you can use your legs as a bit of suspension as well, you see. I think stiff hips are the story of life. They seem to be. Yeah. But that's cool, it's so, so common. The good thing you've got is you're completely in balance. There's no tilting anything. It's all very straight, which is which is what we want to see on drops. The last few people that came through, there was a lot of kind of bars turning and shoulders moving. You're completely in balance, which is why I'm not in the slightest bit worried watching. But your weight movement there was just a little bit too late. You almost moved back once your front wheel was already in the air. You want to start to move back. Slow the movement down, start it a little bit earlier. There still could still be a little bit more movement there, I think. Much better. Still, still like, Yeah, still just not moving enough with your hips. You're still a little bit high, you know, just a little bit too stiff. That's all. And just when you start introducing the speed, you'll probably find you'll feel a little bit off balance. I mean, it's great at the moment at that speed, but once you start going a bit quicker, I think you'll probably feel that you want to move a little bit lower and a little bit further back. I think I'm naturally leaving it later to try and stop any chance of getting it too early, if you know what I mean. And the likelihood on this drop is that if you're going slower, you'd probably make it to the very end. I'd probably say that this lip here, because there's a slight rise in the trail, when you're going quick, the likelihood is you'd, you'd hit that. But slower, your suspension in the tyres are probably good. It's only a tiny little bump. You're probably going to absorb that slower and probably make it as far as here. You'll see that bunny hopping is actually a combination of two movements, all in the body weight, and the first half is actually a proper manual. We now need to try a method of lifting the back wheel into the air. Now, using flat pedals at this point is very helpful because it means you won't be relying on the physical contact between your SPD shoe and pedal. The movement forwards and upwards in this point and the kicking backwards of your feet and will flick the back wheel up into the air with the front wheel still on the ground. Once you feel competent and happy with the back wheel lifting up in this manner, we can tie the two together with a bunny hop.
jumps to a lot of people can quite often seem like really mythical beasts and uh, not really sure how to attack them. And what you quite often find is that people try and do far too much and put far too much effort into jumping. So we've started by using your body weight and no strength and getting the, the actual manual movement. And then we've toned that movement right down and tried to time it with the lip of the jump. So you'll see that as the jump progresses, as the transition lifts up and, and, and you get to the lip, your weight's moved fractionally back so there's no weight on the front wheel. And with the right speed, the front wheel just lifts up into the air. And if you hold that position just for a split second until the back wheel gets to the lip, you can then do the same movement in reverse, just moving slightly forwards again. And again, these are very tiny movements. And it's almost as if there's an imaginary line drawn between the takeoff and the landing and we're just riding over a, an invisible hump. You've got the last one perfect. Right, the, I think the only reason you've not got the other ones is that you're just not going fast enough. Right. So by the time you get to the last one you've picked up enough speed to actually clear it. What you're doing is great. I mean, it's really, really good. It's very controlled, which is, a, as right. you know, we said, that's what we're after. With Steve, it was so kind of mechanical and exaggerated that he was finding it, well, it's kind of off balance all the time, really. And he was swerving in between the jumps because he was landing with his weight right off the back. So there's no weight on the front wheel, so he was swerving off and then pulling it back on, and then the same thing was happening on the next jump. So now we're just trying to get him to just do just do less. 